Welcome to Champions of Data and AI, brought to you by Databricks. In each episode, we salute champions of data and AI, the change agents who are shaking up the status quo. These mavericks are rethinking how data and AI can enhance the human experience. We'll dive into their challenges and celebrate their successes, all while getting to know these leaders a little more personally. Welcome to Champions of Data and AI. I'm your host for this episode, Alex Mysak. From Wall Street to Hollywood, one absolute for every industry is that data is critical to future success. In this episode, I'm joined by Duan Peng, Senior Vice President of Data and AI at Warner Media. Duan and I will discuss how data transcends industries. We'll also talk about how her experiences are reshaping her approach to rethink customer experiences with entertainment platforms like HBO Max. Let's get started. Duan, it's lovely to see you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me here. And so having such an extraordinary company like Warner Media, um, you representing here today with the media, strong media archives, I thought what might be really exciting for our audience is to ask you a few pop questions as an icebreaker around some of the Warner Media characters. Would that be cool? That sounds great. So I'd love to hear from you, which Warner Brothers character had the most impact on your childhood and why? So I would say Wonder Woman. Um, so I have been a long time fan of uh, a DC, you know, characters and Wonder Woman is always inspired, um, you know, even at the early age of my life. Um, she is so dedicated, energetic, and also has a really uh, great, you know, social purpose. Um, so I think that's really what I have been inspired throughout my life in my career. Um, I couldn't agree more with you. I'm actually also a big Wonder Woman fan. Um, and slightly different question, similar. Which Warner Brothers character would you go into business with and why? This time I would probably choose Harry Potter. Uh, so <laughs> Harry Potter, uh, again, is being a very popular character. Uh, but I think, you know, the, the way that Harry Potter is, you know, playing all the magic, but also, you know, working uh, with all his friends, and save the world. Um, that really, you know, great, you know, put a great example as uh, great teamwork and the way that, you know, like especially our data and the AI team, right? We're putting a lot of the um, sounds like a magic. We're putting, you know, a lot of AI predictions, you know, like trying to really, you know, make changes and drive innovation. Um, so that's uh, some character that my team and myself has always been embracing um, as a, a really good icon. No, and as a, a Brit, couldn't, again, one of my personal favorites. So you and I are very much aligned. Um, I think one of the things in prep, Duan, that was so extraordinary about you is your career and the different experiences. And particularly, there's one particular point where you made a very curious jump from finance into Hollywood. Um, I would love for you to share with the audience like a little bit about that transition and particularly what were the similarities and some of the differences? Yeah, definitely. So uh, I would say from Wall Street to uh, Hollywood is a, a very interesting move. Um, I have always been very passionate about looking at the challenges and using machine learning and AI to drive business growth and to really help, you know, uh, improve our customer experience. Um, whether it's Wall Street or uh, Hollywood, uh, my passion is always tied into the data and the AI space. Um, and Hollywood over the last few years um, has been into really this technology transformation, especially in the direct to consumer area, which has led into a, a very fun and interesting journey for me. And perhaps, um, I mean, I, I couldn't agree more, um, given some of the technology we've now seen, you know, over the last challenging couple of years um, and how that's transformed, you know, people's homes. Um, what is the most rewarding AI project that you've worked on? Yeah, so I would say um, the one that we have been working to, you know, build our uh, personalization uh, system to really help, you know, drive um, our customer engagement, their, um, you know, like experience, right, across all their different devices. Um, 
And that has been something that uh, we feel that since launch of HBO Max, that has been really contributed you know, to our growth and then to our product innovations to uh, you know, like continue driving this as a you know, global scale as we launch more countries. And so um, I would love to also hear from you. You've had this incredible transformational um, journey with brands like Disney, um, Fox, NBC Universal, um, Warner Media, now HBO Max. Outside of just you being on the team, what would you say have been some of the consistent elements around the team's success? Yeah, so a team, um, you know, in the in the you know current, you know, uh, I would say fast paced, you know, changing space in the data and the AI area. So we're always, you know, uh, really, you know, kind of target building a team of top talents. Um, and then I have a very diversified team. Uh, with very different experience, backgrounds, uh, skills, but really work well together. And then uh, to get to, you know, our, you know, AI uh, technology into the next level. So um, we're building the culture, of, we call it like, you know, the inclusion equity culture um, that really inspire uh, our top talents and help us retain our talents. Um, we obviously had very rapid growth over the last, uh, you know, last year uh, since launch. Uh, so we are, um, you know, braced by this continuous high growth over, you know, probably also in the, the next couple of years. Um, that presents an incredible uh, opportunity for our data scientists to, you know, really get in uh, to help build this amazing product um, that's going to be, you know, a major player in the market. Yeah, yeah. And when you're talking about that kind of pace of growth and change, you know, what have been some of the key challenges for data and AI that you've come across? Yeah, so, um, you know, we just launched HBO Max um, in Latin in 39 countries, uh, and we'll continue to launch in Europe and in Asian Pacific. So we're currently really, you know, like I caught facing the, uh, how we can continue scaling up our capabilities from the US market to the, to the global market. Yeah. Um, so we're thinking to really upgrade our data and machine learning infrastructure yeah. um, because the data now processing, you know, you know, the volume will be doubled and tripled uh, when we go global. And then we're also processing the real-time data and driving a lot of uh, uh, AI capabilities like you know, personalization um, and data science applications. So at the end of the day, we're dealing also very different local markets, right? With different portal offerings, you know, different languages. Um, and we need to figure out how we are going to incorporate those different factors uh, into our data capabilities. And it's very interesting to see the differences between those uh, global spaces. Um, that's what we are actively working on now. So Duan, you mentioned scale and for scaling that fast, as you just described, then architecture, in this case, data architecture becomes critical. Um, could you talk a little bit about the role that your data architecture plays within that? Sure. Um, so we're really thinking about the data architecture that can enable our real-time analytics and uh, machine learning capabilities um, at a global scale. Um, so we're exploring uh, currently with Lakehouse architecture with Databricks um, as our ge next generation of data platform. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we want to really have uh, the open source environment um, and also really unify our BI and AI capability into one platform to enable the collaboration across our you know, data and AI teams. Um, we're also looking to really become probably eventually like multi-cloud you know, environment. Um, so which I think Databricks is really a pioneer in this space. No, very much so. And um, as customers and other organizations are considering this transition, what do you think have been some of the challenges that having this data lake first approach has solved? So challenges you had before that you felt have materially improved? So I think, um, you know, the speed of AI technology innovation is something, you know, um, we just really kind of start seeing, uh, but we'll actually probably really see more, right, in the, you know, in the coming years. 
Um, so we want to continue really driving our, you know, data architecture to uh, enable, you know, that innovation in the, in the AI space. Um, and really also connect with our, you know, upstream, you know, technology in the data pipeline, right, into our data lake, lake house, um, overall, you know, platform capability. And then with analytics, you know, like BI, AI, all coming together. So it's a continuous effort uh, to, you know, drive this, I would say the unified approach. Um, and then currently we're doing a lot of experimentation, you know, uh, a lot of, you know, the work across the teams, across our technology team, data team, uh, also, you know, with our, you know, stakeholders. Um, I think there are going to be some continuous, you know, like uh, innovation in the space. Um, so really excited to, you know, working with DataBrace um, and then to, you know, drive this journey. Yeah, I, uh, I thought that you had unintentionally described our stack front to back. So thank you for that. That was uh, very kind and we appreciate the partnership. Um, I think one of the other things to ask you about is um, on one of our previous conversations, you mentioned something like um, we are just getting started with the potential of AI. Could you share with the viewers what you meant by that and what you think is the potential of AI in the movie and entertainment business? Yes, absolutely. Um, so as I mentioned, you know, like, uh, we have been using AI to really help driving, uh, a lot of the, the spaces, uh, for HBO Max growth in product marketing and content. Um, so right now, for example, we're building the content recommendation and search engines to really help personalization, um, to personalize our customer experience across all the devices, um, in the global space. So, I think there's some continuous opportunities um, to pioneer in this field um, and we can do more in the future. Um, it's all very exciting at this point. Um, so I guess what you're alluding to, Duan, is um, the use of technology to improve customer experience through some of the recommendations that you're able to better predictively make for them. Um, as I also mentioned earlier in this discussion today, you've really come into people's front rooms in the last two years with the acceleration of this technology. So what are your thoughts around customer trust and the extension of that is customers trust in the way that their data is handled? Yes, absolutely. This is a great question. Um, so I will say we really respect the privacy of our uh, consumers. We're customer first in our data privacy practice and all the data we collect is really to enhance our customer experience. We are uh, intentional in the data we collect and we only collect the data uh, as we need. We do not sell any user data for any financial reasons. Um, and we, we hold ourselves uh, to the high standards of the privacy compliance and data security. No, that's, that's excellent to hear. And obviously, I mean, data governance is like probably one of the biggest topics that we discuss across our customers today. So, so thank you for your thoughts on that. Um, Maybe just to, as we're getting towards the end of this conversation, as you look back over the last two years of your career, what is one thing you're the most proud of? And also perhaps I spoke with Dan Jevons at Shell about some of his learning lessons. What is another example um, of something that you would have liked to have gone differently? Yeah, so um, we, you know, we're looking to continue like using our, you know, AI technology, right, to drive a better, um, you know, a better future of our customer experience. Um, so we, um, you know, we now you know, know who are our customers, right? And then in order to really reach out to them and tailor their, you know, kind of watching and viewing experience. Um, and then we, you know, do this through a combination of uh, the first party and, you know, third party or in platform tools um, that really provide us with the data to understand uh, you know, what our customer watch and, you know, when they watch and, and then the platforms they, they're watching. Um, and from there, you know, our engineers teams, you know, they're going to build, you know, all the algorithm uh, to really, you know, like utilize all the data that we capture and translate into, you know, the intelligence um, so that we can create more accurate insights and predictions. Mm -hmm. um, so we leverage the data to really help uh, our leaders to make better decisions across our business functions 
Um, for example, we help our you know content planning strategy team uh, to you know better understand you know what type of content is performing well and where we see you know the audience overlap. Um, so that the team can really use those insights along with your deep expertise of um, the storytelling to, you know, to make better decisions, you know, um, in terms of, you know, how they map the content calendar over the coming years. Absolutely. Um, and perhaps the thing that you would have liked to have gone differently, the learning lesson? Um, I think, you know, what we have been, you know, uh, gone through is uh, absolutely amazing. Um, and I think uh, if I look back, you know, this journey and I think if there's anything, you know, we can do more, um, I feel like we, uh, you know, we can basically continue building, um, a cut, you know, this, uh, the culture of transformation um, that, you know, really get all the top talents together and continue driving uh, the environment that going to inspire, uh, you know, more talents coming into the space um, and then really help, you know, uh, getting into the next generation of innovations um, and be very competitive in the market. So there's definitely more work to do, uh, but I, I'm very excited, you know, you know, where we are. And I think, you know, we learned a lot and that, that can definitely help us um, be, you know, be uh, more effective in the future. So Duan, bringing back the conversation a little bit more to about you, if you could go back in time and give your younger self one piece of advice or perhaps give advice to someone either in the data and AI space today or building a career in the data and AI space, what would that piece of advice be? So I would uh, tell all the ladies, uh, especially the younger women, uh, you know, really getting into the data and AI space in this field, um, go with your passion, uh, pursue your dreams, and you will really get there. Um, using the, the My Childhood's Icon, Wonder Woman, um, just be brave um, and then, you know, get into, be confident, um, get into the space, and you will be really successful. Thank you for joining this episode of Champions of Data and AI, brought to you by Databricks. Thousands of data leaders rely on Databricks to simplify data and AI, so data teams can innovate faster and solve the world's toughest problems. Visit databricks.com to learn how data leaders are unlocking the true potential of all their data.